coding OS. OS coding. Beep it in the middle. Hello and good morning. Arm ARC AVR. Beautiful morning out here in front of Bay Ontario. Sea sky, Darwin. Different architectures that you can compile your C code to binaries for those architectures. All of those have like all these types of options. So if you change that option to something else, it'll fit a different machine. There's no other language like this. No other language. I can't seem to get my code to run on this open SBI machine. It could be from input output problems. Like I'm, I'm not seeing the output of my program. It could also be that my code is not working. Like I'm not compiling it for the right type of system. I'm struggling with uh, the tool chain that you need to have on your computer to be able to compile things for the right type of machine. You have to actually clone everything from their GitHub and you have to make them and they rely on a bunch of other libraries so it's kind of like a pain in the ass it's not just like npm install stuff it's actually dealing with linkers and libraries and the right type of architecture real stuff real stuff that's where programmers are made oh my god these libraries are getting so long to get built on a fucking 32 core cpu what the fuck is this library Jesus. Yes. Oh. Bam. Turns out I built the library with the wrong flags, so I have to. <sighs> Finish this shit. Apparently the build had a problem, so here we go again. Jesus fucking Christ. I built it wrong for the thousandth time and it built it again. This is uh at 4 p.m. I finally realized that this is shitty. Do not use this guys. Do not just go straight to this site toolchains.bootlin.com and they have pre pre-built tool chains for anything. I'm having trouble and I don't know where I'm getting hit from. So we're gonna Here's debug the shit out of this machine. We're going through every address in the RAM, keeping an eye on the program counter and seeing if there's a crazy jump in the program counter and why. This is the start of my memory address and I'm, I put a breakpoint there and I'm just jumping uh, forward one step at a time. And then there's a crazy jump there. Did you see that? It went from 12 to 688. Hey, it went back, see? That part probably was a subroutine there. Okay. That's stupid, you can just press enter. <laughs> you don't need to press up every time. Okay, valuable lesson. Oh, you can also, oh, it's pretty good. Hey, it's stuck in a loop. It's stuck in a loop. That is what's happening. Why is it in a loop? I have an idea. Um, just giving the loop, the infinite loop some time to see maybe if it's trying to start up the system emulation, which is unlikely, but ChatGPT suggested that, that that's a good idea. And funny thing about ChatGPT when you're getting this specific about something is that it fails. It fails horribly. This is not developing a button with react this is not the 
<laughs> the Google shit, how they changed their sign up page. This is real shit, okay? And chat GPT fails every time. Even Google fails. Like you have to actually dive deep into the details of how things work and kind of guess your way through and face a billion different problems. And this is reassuring me that the course that I'm making is going to be very valuable to people. I can hear the fans on my computer, man. I can hear the fans. That means it's doing something that's on an infinite loop. Oh, I gotta go to the gym though. That's still not working. Well, I've been debugging this shit for hours, but I gotta tell you, look at that shit on my desk. It is my birthday, so I gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> Okay, now let's see we have a Hello World OS. Imagine you have a RISC-V machine with your Hello World OS on it. What happens when you hit the power button? That's kind of the same question as what happens when you hit the power button on any computer? I want to tell you. First, you hit the power on button. It resets the processor to its default state. Then it starts the firmware. It's a piece of code that could be hardware, but it's too complicated to be a hardware. We are currently using OpenSBI. And what it does is that it tests the hardware, see like if the memory is connected, is the, is the CPU running, is everything okay? And it sets the clock and it does just basic stuff like that we have the bootloader. And what the bootloader does is that it loads the OS kernel into the RAM. It could be coming from a disk, it could be coming from UART, it could be coming from any type of source. And it also kind of sets up the registers and prepares the processor to start executing on the kernel. And then on the fourth, and kind of like the last step, we have the kernel that prints hello world. What do you mean by print? You have to talk hardware, because this is OS, this is bare metal. Print doesn't mean shit here. You actually need to use a UART module or something like that. You need to have something. But in our case, we're using UART. So you need to code a UART module as well for this Hello World. And if you take a look at this, the green parts are the parts that are not different than a normal OS. Like it doesn't matter if you're coding your Hello World or an actual OS, the green parts you need to implement and make work. The only part that's different is the kernel. So yeah, that's what happens when you turn on your computer. And that's what happens, that you, like you need to know that your code, when it's being run, it's being run on an OS. It's being, these stuff are the stuff that are being dealt with. Good morning. What's up, Reto? What? What? Whenever I'm stuck on some problem like this, I have learned that I need to backtrack and see what it is that I'm radically doing wrong. Okay, after writing an LD file and a CRT file, um, learning a little bit about assembly and shit. I'm about to run it. Let's see what happens. Whoa, what? I got new shit. I got errors. Uh, okay. I'm starting at that address, which is the start of the ROM and the firmware of the OpenSBI. So we have to start at that address. Okay, I figured it out. I had to place my code in a specific spot in the memory. And also to print things out, I need to put characters in a specific spot in the memory as well. So, um, one, two. Whoa, bro.
What the fuck? <laughs> like an old man trying to say hello world. 